Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be comparing the differences between surface area and volume. We're going to be starting this unit on volume and I wanted you to have a good understanding. So let's start with how to find surface area. To find surface area, you add up the areas of all the faces on the outside of the 3D figure. The key word here is the outside. So look at this example. I have a triangular prism here and to find the surface area, you have to find the area of each face. So you'll see that this face here is highlighted in yellow, this face in green, this face in pink, and you'd find the area of each face, add those all together, and then that would be the surface area of this triangular prism. Remember, it's the outside of the figure. Now to find volume, this is different. You have to figure out how much space the 3D figure takes up, or how much it takes to fill the 3D figure. And the key word is inside. So surface area, you want to think outside. Volume, you want to think inside. And in the picture, I have this beaker being filled up with a liquid to represent that volume is how much space it takes up or how much it takes to fill an object, a 3D object. So now I'm going to show you some examples. And my first example is a box of M&Ms and we're gonna compare surface area to volume. If you think about the surface area of this M&M box, you would find the area of every face on the outside of this box, outside being the key word. So you'd find the area of this face and the face in the back, those two would be identical. You'd find the area of this face, which would be identical to the area of this face. You'd also have to find the area of this top and the area of the bottom and add all those areas together. Some people say, you know, it's good to think about, you know, if you were gonna paint this box, what part of it would you paint? So you could paint this face, you could paint this face, you could paint this face. The idea is that everything that you're touching, every surface on the outside could be painted. So that's the surface area of the box. Now, if we think about this rectangular prism in terms of volume, we need to think about this box differently. We need to think about how much space this box takes up. We, we could also think of it as how much does it take to fill this box? So being creative, you could think about it as, well, if you want to think about the volume of this box, you could think about how many M&Ms it takes to fill this box. Now, that would kind of be a silly measurement because look at what happens if you start to fill something up with M&Ms, there's spaces still like in between them. So the M&Ms don't completely fill the object. So we don't usually use M&Ms as a measurement for volume. I mean, you could do a comparison with M&Ms, but with volume, the idea is how much it takes to fill this box. That would be the volume, or you could say, how much space this box takes up. All right, let's move on to another example. Let's say we're looking at a rectangular prism and we wanna think about surface area. For surface area, I want us to look at the net. So the net is when you unravel the 3D figure and to find the surface area, I would find the area of one, two, three, four, five, six faces and you add up the area of all those faces and that would be the surface area of this rectangular prism. Now volume is how much space it takes up. Let's measure this using something alternative. Let's use some cereal. So we're gonna go ahead and fill this off with cereal. It's almost filled. Uh-oh, that's going everywhere, sorry about that. Let's fill it a little bit more. Try to be accurate. So volume is, we're focusing on the keyword, the inside. Okay, so there is the volume represented in, with cereal. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take um, this measuring utensil and I'm going to see how much cereal we had, how much cereal it took to fill this up. So it looks like it is about at, do you see that it's about at one cup? So about one cup of cereal filled up this rectangular prism. All right, let's use another example. Um, in this example, the base of this pyramid has one, two, three, four, five 
sides or edges. And so that would mean that this is a pentagon. If Since you name pyramids for their base, this would be a pentagonal pyramid. And we're going to start by thinking about surface area. Remember, surface area is the outside of the figure. The key word is the outside. So basically, if we go back to the paintbrush, everything that you could paint, basically everything that you could touch. And we have to find the area of one face, the next face, the next face, the next face, and then add up the areas of all the faces to find the total surface area. Okay, so this net represents the surface area. Now let's think about the volume. And for volume, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually fill this up because we're thinking about how much space this takes up, or you could say how much it takes to fill up this 3D figure. So I'm going to put this underneath in case I spill. Don't want to spill on my computer. So we're going to fill this with water, and I've colored this water green. Try to make it a little bit more fun. And I'm going to try to fill it all the way to the top. Let's see. Okay, and I try to put into this container the exact amount of water that I needed so this would be empty. And then we're going to trade, oh boy. And I'm going to pour it in back into the cup. Okay, I spilled a little bit, but this will measure it pretty well. And we filled this amount of water filled up this pentagonal pyramid and let's see how much water that was it looks like it's do you see it's like just below a cup but i think if i was able to get the part that i had spilled inside of it it might have actually been exactly a cup just like the other like the rectangular prism so those were two more examples of the comparison between surface area and volume now let's look back at um, the next slide. Okay, so we measure volume with different types of units. So you could use, look over here, we were measuring in cups. You can measure in ounces. See over here, OZ is for ounces. You can measure in pints. Um, over here, I have milliliters. Uh, you could measure something if you wanted. You could do a comparison with M&Ms. So you could see how many M&Ms fill this jar, how many M&Ms fill this jar, and then make a comparison and say, you know, this one has a larger vol- whoops, this one, this jar has a larger volume because it can hold so many M&Ms, and this jar is smaller because it can hold a, a fewer amount of M&Ms. You know, but when we're actually working in math, we don't usually use these measurements. What we normally use in math is we use a cubic unit. So if you look at this cubic unit, this is one meter, by one meter by one meter. So this would be one meter cubed. If you look at this one, it has side lengths of, of one centimeter. So this cube is one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter. And then you take, you know, one centimeter cubed and you look over here and you say, okay, how many of those one centimeter cubes does it take to fill up my 3D figure? So this is how we're going to be measuring our, um, our 3D figures when we're working in this class. And you'll see over here that it'll it'll always be written centimeters with a power of three, or feet with a power of three, or whatever units of measure you're using with a power of three. So this is how we're going to measure volume in this class. I hope that was a good comparison for you and that you can kind of understand the difference between surface area and volume before we do some of our volume problems today.